Hey, hey, it is me, me, Dunker, and this is my bike. Uh, I'm still pumping away to get back home from Orlando, and uh, let's go. <laughs> okay, I'm right about the halfway point on my ride home. I'm uh, I'm four and a half hours into this ride. Five, sorry, five and a half hours. And I, I took a little bit longer taking breaks and stuff. So it's probably gonna take me about 11 hours to get home when it only took me 10 hours to get to Orlando. But that's just because I took longer breaks. I wanna enjoy myself coming home. Don't wanna push myself too hard. It's the last thing I, that's the last thing I need to do is injure myself the day before I got to work and, and, and miss out on work and miss, therefore miss out on money. And coming from a conference that focuses on the concept of money, I am acutely aware of how unwise that is. <laughs> um, the next part of my uh, day was lunch. The next panel was Brian Sovereign from Sovereign Tech. He had a talk about uh, how trustless systems can't be trusted. He focused on the problems with trustless systems, how some people want to base their lives on uh, ledgers, so they want to blockchainize everything. This Brian Sovereign made some very valid points when it comes to trusting these systems, you know, when, what happens if the system breaks? You know, what happens if it, they have to do a rollback, which happened here uh, a few, what, a year ago, I guess, on Bitcoin, where there was a bunch of uh, double spending or whatever. I, I, I'm, I don't recall exactly the details, but they had to roll back and cancel a bunch of transactions as if they never happened. Um, what if that happens? with your marriage. You know, you get married, you put it on the blockchain, then the blockchain rolls back and your marriage never happened, according to the blockchain. You're relying on that blockchain to keep track of things which may not actually be there in the future. And he talked about um, how we should not be putting our lives uh, on these networks. Uh, we should be just rolling back to uh, decentralize even further instead of trying to have these giant communities of thousands of people roll back to the uh, I forget the number is some scientist had a number where the average person can only handle a social circle of 50 to 150 people any more than that and it becomes unwieldy the average person can't have that many close relationships and them actually be valid relationships they're just you know Hey, I kind of know that guy because he's on my Facebook, you know. We should really be focusing on the very extremely local level, like even down to the, uh, your neighborhoods, and, which, is, which is a very, very valid point because we don't even have, like I, I, I sadly will admit that I don't know my neighbor's names. I don't know my neighbors, which is a sad fact. I should know my neighbors because if anything goes wrong, I'm, I may rely on those people for help, you know, and I don't know them, so they may not help me. That's definitely something I hope to re uh, rectify when I get up to New Hampshire. Anyway, Brian Sovereign's uh, talk was very interesting, and right after him was Stephanie Murphy. Stephanie Murphy had a very informative talk about uh, micro businesses, and as she pointed out, 99% of all businesses on the planet are micro businesses. A micro business is a business that has only one or two employees. So basically a mom and pop or a single. She uh, listed a bunch of things that people who want to remove themselves from the uh, fiat money, what, what we could do using Bitcoin and other alternative currencies, what kinds of careers we could have and live very comfortable lives outside of mainstream uh, employment. And uh, it got me thinking about a bunch of things about my site and 
my writing and my videos and I might try to put some of those ideas into action. I'm not certain how much I can actually accomplish. But you know, this is I got time. I'm very excited about the future and things I may be able to participate in. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was during my lunch break, I went into the vendor room and uh, I talked to uh, uh, Davi Barker and, and I found the guys from Free Talk Live again. I actually got a chance to talk to them this time and they, uh, we chatted and, and uh, they both know where Sebastian is, which kind of excited me. Uh, they, they both, they were very gracious and they thanked me multiple times for, cause I'm a platinum amplifier and they, they were, they were very happy. They were like, thank you for supporting us. And I you know, and, and uh, that was cool. <laughs> I got to meet them. They're a couple of my personal heroes. They, uh, they had a uh, Bitcoin vending machine there. The guys at Coin Outlet. It looks like an ATM. And uh, you put in cash and you, 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 you scan your QR code for your wallet on your smartphone and it puts Bitcoin in your, in your wallet, the equivalent of whatever cash you put in. I, I didn't have any real cash with me so I only put in $5 and within, I don't know, it was like 30 seconds or less, I got a transaction on my phone. It's like, boop, there you go. And I was like, that's badass. Just, uh, the next panel, that I saw was uh, interesting enough. Uh, I, I saw Davi Barker. He he made a, he had a panel uh, called uh, Branding Bad, which was uh, a play on Breaking Bad, where he talked about brands and how someone can ruin their their reputation and lower their profitability by doing poor logos and and. He, he was he showed what he is good at he, he, he is a designer he, 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 he makes logos and he showed us how some of the huge fortune 500 companies spend millions of dollars polishing their image for public consumption and he and he, and he provided some of this information to us little yokel guys you know just say hey this is this sub stuff you might want to consider if it works for McDonald's it might work for you and uh, he had some fantastic ideas. It's a great talk. That brings me up to the last couple of uh, panels of the night, which I only saw part of one. And because I had only gotten like four to five hours of sleep the night before, I was pretty beat. Uh, my legs were tired. I was starting to get a headache because I was hungry. I was getting hungry again. I. I ended up catching a little bit of Jeffrey Tucker and uh, Andreas Antonopoulos. Uh, they were wonderful. <laughs> and I'm very much looking forward to seeing an online version of their talk because I only got to catch about 10, 15 minutes of it and I just had to leave. I, 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 had, I had put myself in the corner, the back corner of the room and was leaning against the wall and I was not feeling well. I, I, I was like, I, I gotta go. I don't want to, but I have to. I went back to my room and I, 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 I laid down and just thought of how great the day was. It was just, uh, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Went downstairs, uh, checked out from the hotel, and then I walked around. Oh, I got breakfast. I, I, I went back upstairs and I walked around. I got some video of the, uh, the various rooms. I saw one more panel, which was very interesting. I was surprised. It was, uh, would Uncle Scrooge like Bitcoin? And Uncle Scrooge is obviously, you know, the, the Disney character. And uh, the guy who spoke about it was very knowledgeable and he brought up the uh, uh, creator of Uncle, uh, Uncle Scrooge and talked about him. Carl Banks, I believe is his name. The, the creator, that is. And uh, he, he showed some early comic books of, of how Uncle Scrooge is shown uh, practicing very wise economic policies. You know, he just, you know, and even he had like a little PowerPoint that, that, in, that put in some ducktails 
showing a uh, DuckTales episode showing how uh, hyperinflation is a terrible, terrible thing. And uh, it, was, it was amusing <laughs> and, and informative at the same time. Very, very good panel and a very wonderful day for me, for a very wonderful way to, for me to end my trip. I, I would love to have stayed longer. There was another half dozen panels I could have seen, but I had to leave. And I took one more walk around the, the place and said, said hi and bye to a few people that I ran into. And uh, then I uh, hit the road. Okay, I am in the uh, city of Palm Bay. It's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half away from home. So I'm definitely on the home stretch. I don't need Google Maps to find my way here. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is a nice uh, kind of a sunset. The sun's actually over there, but um, the, the, the color over the water is really pretty. And Anyway, uh, I'll uh, get home and uh, start working on this video editing and stuff and uh, I just <laughs> this is an amazing experience I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm proud of myself that I pulled it off I'm uh, happy that I'm able to do this that means the rides I want to do in the future uh, are much more possible especially the long ride to New Hampshire uh, I just <laughs> I, I, I can't express how happy I am. Uh and if you want to follow more of my adventures, please visit dunkerbike.com.